Ave, morituri te salutant. As everyone knows, gladiators entering the arena in ancient Rome faced the emperor and cried out, we who are about to die salute you. Are we going to die? We, I mean our beautiful green and blue planet Earth, mankind, all animals, plants, oceans. Well, it seems we are going that way. We are overusing the Earth's resources. We witness every day global warming and climate changing. The oceans, the soil, the atmosphere are terribly polluted. We are in the middle of the sixth extinction, as Elizabeth Colbert wrote in her excellent book. So, yes, we are slowly dying. And we need superheroes to save us. We need every one of us to be that superhero. How? You know that I'm editor-in-chief of National Geographic Croatia. And our motto is inspire people to care about the planet. We were looking for Earth heroes, and believe it or not, we have found them. Within our project, Yellow Square for Sustainable Development, Science and Education, we have found people who are good examples for Earth heroes, who spend their knowledge, their skills, their time to fight for Earth and for the future. And young people should learn from them how to be the Earth warrior, how to save the planet and all the life on it, how to loudly say and show to us grown people how to stop destroying the planet and the future, your future. Life one young hero like Greta Thunberg has done. I'm very proud to say that I know Sir David Attenborough. And he said, surely we have responsibility to leave for future generations a planet that is healthy and habitable by all species. And one another great man, Jonathan Porritt, says, the future will be green or not at all. Not at all. It's a very dangerous vision. But how we know that our planet, habitats, life on Earth is endangered? The number of endangered species is rising. You can see it everywhere, in all continents. Every year, more and more species are endangered. And right now, 15,000 species are critically endangered on Earth. And could you imagine the life without animals, without plants, just on just desert? It would be a terrible life. Rainforest. 2,000 trees per minute are cut down. You cannot count to 2,000 in one minute, and 2,000 trees are cut down every minute. Rainforests now cover less than 6% of the Earth's total land space. 6%, and they are lungs of the Earth, our lungs. One out of four ingredients in our medicine come from rainforest plants. So we are killing medicine. We are going to die. Desperate vision. The number of animals living on the land has fallen by 40% since 1970. 60% of the world's 504 primate species are threatened with extinction. 65% of whale species have been affected through by catch in global fishing. 40% of the world's Bird species are in decline. More than six, 650,000 marine mammals are caught or seriously injured by fishing gear annually. 25% of the world's coral reefs have already been damaged beyond repair. And insect populations have declined by 75% in some places of the world. And we all know why bees are very important. And we all know that we have a problem with bees right now. Do you think that the situation is different in Europe? Or Europe, where our Western culture was born, is not an exception. Although the situation with plants, laws, and behavior here is much better than in the rest of the world. But, as you can see on this slide, biodiversity in Europe with endangered species 
the situation is not critical, but a lot of species are endangered in our mother continent. Who is the greatest pollution on Earth and our great, greatest enemy? Do you remember the great movie, The Graduate, with Dustin Hoffman? I'm sure you do, of course, everybody watched that movie. Talking about his good future, his, I think, uncle said just one word, plastics. Thinking that plastics was a very good thing. It's not. Plastics is one of the biggest troubles for the future. A few facts about plastic pollution. Enough plastics is thrown away each year to circle the Earth four times. Not once, four times. This year, over 9 million tons of plastics will enter the world's oceans. 1 million seabirds and 100,000 marine mammals are killed annually from plastics in our oceans. 35 billion plastic water bottles are thrown away every year. Plastic constitutes approximately 90% of a trash floating on the ocean. You can be in the middle of the ocean and plastics is there. 50% of the plastics we use, we use just once and then throw away. Shame. Of course, there are a lot of bad facts. More than 5 trillion plastic pieces afloat, weighing more than 2,500 tons. Marine organisms 10 kilometers deep had ingested plastic fragments. 2 million tons a year plastic bottles sold by just top six global firms. Imagine the rest. And plastic does not decompose. It just gets smaller, becoming microplastics. And the real danger is there, microplastics. So, microplastics is in every one of us. You can find it in every living being on Earth. In you, too. You have, right now, microplastics inside you. Corals, sea beings, birds. Microplastics is everywhere, kills them all, and us, too. Another big murderer is around us, cigarette butts. I'm not talking about cancer. We know everything about cancer and cigarettes. But cigarette butts are number one item found on beaches, roadsides, and parks, and they do not biodegrade. They are toxic. You can find in them lead, arsenic, nicotine. And everything is really, really dangerous for habitat, for environment, for all living species. 30% of smokers reported littering within the last 30 days. 30%. And 95% of cigarette filters are type of plastic, is a type of plastic which persists in the environment. And that is very dangerous. So let's do something about stop smoking because of the cancer and because of the environment. What should we do with plastics? You can find recipes everywhere. I, I will just say a few advices. Can it, tap it, store it, but in, but out, remove it, refuse it, recycle it, reuse it, reinvent it. Everything what you can do, just don't throw it into the ocean. Reuse it, recycle it. There is nothing shameless there. It's a good thing to do it. But what about fashion? We all want to look good. We all want beautiful dresses. But unfortunately, maybe you don't know, textile manufacturing is the second biggest polluting industry after the oil industry. I will not talk about the oil industry. It's notorious. But fashion? What should we Earth superheroes do about fashion? Rethink, refuse, 
reduce, repair, reuse, recycle. Don't be ashamed. R rethink. Think about what you should wear. Why so many things? Refuse to wear bad things that pollute our environment. Reduce your set of clothes. Repair it. Reuse it. My, my first suit was reused grandfather's suit. And it was beautiful. Recycle it. That's really very important. So uh, fashion is not so beautiful as we think. Of course, next, food. We must eat. We don't want to die. But food is the third largest greenhouse emitter producing of food. Third largest. It using, it, we need a lot of water, a lot of land, a lot of chemicals. Uh, we waste a lot of food every day. 25% of fresh water is consumed. And you know that the Third World War will be about fresh water. One billion people are malnourished. And we are wasting food. 24 million acres deforested to grow food. And remember, forests are lungs of the earth. So we really need to think about producing food. So, what are the tips for that? Save energy, save water, save biodiversity. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's kind of mantra. There is no planet B. So we must do something every day. For example, Recycling one aluminum can saves enough electricity to power a TV for three hours. One aluminum can, one Coca-Cola. One ton less paper saves 17 trees. 1,500 liters of oil. 26,000 liters of water. 266 kilograms of air pollution. And 4,000 kilowatt hours of energy. Just one ton less paper. So, use computers. Now we are living in the modern times. We have something else than paper to communicate. So, how, do, how should we behave? Do not be an egoist. Be an ecologist. Little, some advices. Buy less, not buy more. Shop local. Buy organic. Holiday locally. You don't have to travel by planes to another part of the earth. Less meat. It's a big problem, you know. Plant trees. Use green energy. Offset carbon. Cycle or walk. You don't need a car. Be plastic free. And influence. Influence politicians, government, other people how to behave, because we need, we superheroes, need to fight for our planet. And there is something that we should know. We have to change all spheres of our life. Uh, we, United Nations, proclaimed 17 goals of sustainable development. Mankind must follow them. National Geographic and Adria Media Three years ago, started rewarding the best of the best within these 17 categories in Croatia. Finding and rewarding true Earth superheroes. True Earth celebrities, unfortunately, mostly unknown, who fight for our planet and our future. You will see now a short footage of the first award ceremony. It was great, emotional, unforgettable. Among these people, one of the awarded Earth superheroes was Ivana Kordic, co-founder of Project Zlarin, the Island Without Plastics, and the president of the eco-association Tatavaka. Nice name. She is our guest today. See the footage.
Uh, thank you, Herve, very much uh, for inviting me to uh, to talk, uh, and thank you, Lip Summit, to uh, to give me this opportunity to say a few words about our Plastic Free Latin in Initiative. Um, why we started uh, tackling the theme of single-use plastic pollution. Uh, for me, in fact, single-use plastics is is a symbol. When I see something like this, for me, a plastic bag is is a symbol of a mentality that we that our education and the way of life and the mainstream media and everything which forms us actually made us behave like. So um, one single-use plastic bag, which we see almost every day, um, as Herve said in his presentation, we use it as many other single-use items uh, only for a few minutes. And then we throw it away. And then this bag ends up in the ocean or it ends up in the garbage. Uh, bins and it ends up uh, at, the, uh, at the garbage w waste centers. The problem with that is that although we use it for a few minutes, it stays in the environment for decades, sometimes hundreds of years. Uh, so it's this huge clash between something which is used for, for such a short amount of time and without thinking, it ends up being in our environment almost forever. As far as our lifetimes are concerned, it is a forever. Why it bothered me is because uh, when I started thinking about about the way our future will be, what my kids will ask, you know, one day, um, okay, how did we get there? You know, why am I living in a world which doesn't have animals, which doesn't have, um, w you know, resources enough for me to live a dignifying life? That is the point in which I, asking this question, I decided that I have to do something and that's uh, the only meaningful action that I can undertake is to uh, try and start with some really small steps. So, talking about symbols, we decided to start from Laudan Island. Uh, it's a really small island in Adriatic. It's, um, if, if you've been there, you probably know that it's, it's uh, car-free. And uh, maybe a few hundred, 150 people live on it permanently. Uh, it's visited each year by some 3,000 tourists. So, although it's minuscule and it's um, plastic footprint is minuscule, um, we wanted to use it as precisely to, to, to turn it into a, a different kind of a symbol. To turn it into a symbol of a community which faced its own uh, problem with pollution and which started taking some very concrete steps to tackle it. Not thinking, ah, oh, what will this mean in the larger scale? Not counting all the other tens of thousands of islands uh, that we have on our beautiful earth, not counting, you know, billions of people that are there and saying, why aren't they doing, doing something? We, working with the with Zlatan community, we all decided to be the change that we want to see in the world. And I don't believe that that phrase will ever become a cliche. Until everybody behaves like that, uh, it will not, never become a cliche. So how did we do it? Um, well, uh, we picked the battle, you know, big enough to matter, small, small enough to, to win. I really love, it, love this quote uh, because we were, you know, three volunteers working with uh, uh, tourist boards, Latin and the uh, local community municipality board. So the lowest level of, of government. We had very limited resources. We were completely, you know, <laughs> without any backing of any, you know, political agenda or anything like that. So we needed to start small, and Zlatan was, was small. Um, how we started, we applied to uh, this really great um, challenge. It was called the Adriatic Pl Plastic Challenge, and one of the people you will be listening to on the LEAP Summit, Marko Sapek, was behind that challenge. So we won the first prize. Um, that small amount of money actually enabled us to create a story around Zlatan going pr plastic-free, because Although we, we did count in the summer 2018, when we started, we did count 162,000 pieces of single-use plastic that was used on the island in the tourist season. So imagine that, you know, if one such small island produces such a huge amount of plastic waste, you know, what, what about Vodice, the, the, just the, the super touristy town just across the, the Shibening Channel? So we, we worked with, uh, with our community to, on weaving, to weave this story about... Uh, the island going plastic free, but we needed to, you know, change habits because it all comes down. It comes down to changing the single use mentality and single use habits. So we worked little by little. Uh, part of it was finding sub substitute products. So, for instance, we replaced the proverbial plastic bag with uh, uh, with uh, tote bags, which were branded. Um, we worked with this beautiful. Um, 
little Croatian company, family company, which produces permanent, it is plastic, uh, a plastic um, cup, but it's, it's a multiple use plastic cup, which is washable. And this product actually eliminated uh, tens of thousands of, um, of uh, single use plastic cups, which were used in Zlatan's fiestas. So little by little, you know, we, we, changed, we changed habits. Uh, we had the backing of, and basically the key actors in the community were Zlatan's uh, entrepreneurs, so local small store owners, small, you know, uh, cafe owners who really believed in this vision because that was the key to actually, s for them to realize that they can be the change. If we have this common goal, this common vision, we really can do something together. Um, so little by little, we created this, uh, these marks, uh, plastic free sliding marks, uh, which all of the participants of the, of the, the initiative uh, hung out on their, on their stores and uh, conobas and cafes. Uh, so... That was one part of the of, of the of the project of the the initiative, but also we didn't want to stop there. We wanted to start experiment, experimenting in during the first summer with um, a little bit larger waste management issues on the island. So we made this. It, it's called Zlarko, our communal composting unit, uh, which uh, as actually was um, enabled us to to engage in a different kind of learning, and that's actually learning from mistakes. Because uh, as you probably notice wherever you live, and if you live somewhere in Croatia, especially waste management really is a hot hot spot, a hot topic. Uh, we tried to get people to um, throw organic waste and to, to handle all of the organic waste on the on the island. However, a lot of, uh, despite Darko Ronding backing our project, we, we didn't uh, uh, manage to, to, in the first summer, to actually influence people as much so that they wouldn't throw in, you know, cooked stuff or bread or, you know, plastic bottles which were brought from the continent. So in the end, we, we had to be a little bit creative and we, we collaborated with the local nun who, who has a beautiful garden. So now she's taking care of that and she's, she's keeping it in check as the local local authority. But, you know, it was little by little and we really, in this way, what I wanted to show you is that it's a really, it, the whole community got engaged and we really, we were completely inclusive regardless of you know what people what you know they wanted to do or whether they didn't want to to do it we really engaged in the dialogue with them and we were pushing them to to be the change um also and that's that's maybe the final point um we wanted to use Latin as a storytelling um team because it wasn't about just as i said uh, at the beginning you reducing Zlatan's plastic fo footprint but use to, to use it as a symbol for change so in that way we created the film festival or the movie nights uh, many workshops many you know uh, visuals which uh, reminded people that uh, this what the initiative was about and uh, the story actually carried forward uh, not only through rewards we ended up in the united nations through the then um, in the in the talk uh, of the then president of the Republic of Croatia, which mentioned us as, as a good example of and as an example of good practice, but you know the whole point, which 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 I really believe is something which will make permanent change, is that many schools started inviting us. We held many lectures uh, in different classes, and uh, I believe that little by little, just working from plastic as and single-use plastic pollution, you open up the doors to much larger topics, which Herva was mentioning. Pollution is in the face of the, when we face the challenge of biodiversity, it's only one of the five factors. We have habitat loss, we have over uh, consumption of resources, we have uh, invasive species which, which affect it in a negative way, and we have climate change. So it's just one small thing, but if 8 billion of us does one small thing, then it's not small anymore. And that's what I would invite you to do. Pick your own fight, make it small, but make it matter. Thank you.